Hey there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today here on uh, our awesome webinar um, discussing our Yale Summer Session program in conjunction with uh, the Flatiron School. Um, we're just going to give uh, about an extra minute or so um, for those who have RSVP'd on the, uh, today's webinar to be able to show up uh, so that they don't miss out on any of the awesome content we're going to be covering. Um, just so you know, for everyone that's in the webinar right now, it's great to see that we have some attendees who have joined already. Um, while we wait for others to uh, enter the webinar, um, know that in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, there's a little, uh, uh, on the toolbar, a little area that says questions. Uh, feel free during the course of the webinar as we're talking about different content um, to submit uh, those questions accordingly, and we'll happily answer them at the end of the webinar, just because we want to make sure we cover everything and be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, we think it'd be amazing if we could just go through the content on the slides that we have here. Um, that my awesome friends here, Prince and Hannah, will be also covering with me. And um, at that point, you know, we'll answer questions towards the end. But um, all in all, we'll just get started in about another uh, minute. I'm going to share my screen with everyone so that you can see what we're presenting on. Um, for those that are in the webinar, if you want to confirm that you can see my screen in present mode right now, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, and you can feel free to just, you know, confirm via that questions box uh, down below. Uh, on the toolbar, and um, it looks like, uh, thank you, Sean, for confirming that you can uh, uh, see our screen, and um, Sean, can you also hear and uh, see me properly, and all the other uh, two speakers, Hannah and Prince? Awesome, amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so we'll just give it another 30 seconds, and then we shall uh, begin. Cool, thanks for confirming, Christopher. Um, thank you for confirming, Dominic. And again, that same box that you guys are utilizing, you'll uh, want to utilize for uh, any questions that uh, you have along the way while we go through our presentation. And uh, we are more than happy to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, cool. So I see we have a decent uh, size audience. We have some people who are uh, plugged into the webinar right now. And uh, we'll start in another few seconds. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I think we have enough people uh, in the webinar to get started. And uh, so you know, uh, the webinar is recorded. So we'll have a recording of it. And we can send it out to any um, people who are to join late. But um, thank you all so much for uh, joining uh, me and uh, uh, my colleagues Prince and Hannah here today on our awesome webinar where we will be discussing uh, Yale Summer Session uh, Web Development Boot Camp that's in conjunction with uh, the Flatiron School. Um, for those who are joining us today, um, uh, I mentioned it just before, uh, for any of the new attendees, uh, just feel free to submit any questions that you have. Um, during the course of the webinar, um, in the little questions box on the bottom, uh, myself, Prince, and Hannah, we are more than happy to answer those questions at the end of the webinar and uh, ultimately after we get through um, our content here on these slides that we're going to be going through. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us today and uh, we'll now get uh, formally started. So um, to begin, uh, in terms of who we are, um, just quick introduction. So my name is Max Ringelheim. I'm actually the product marketing lead here at Flatiron School. Just started over the last month or so. Um, I actually graduated from University at Buffalo and have been a past startup technology founder and CEO. Had a video conferencing software company from the past. Uh, if you're familiar with those hoverboard devices from a few years ago, I was responsible for those items. And ultimately, I'm just super uh, uh, stoked and excited about uh, helping revolutionize uh, the education um, industry. Um, Prince, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself too? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Prince Wilson. Uh, I'm the lead instructor for this opportunity today. And so I just think it's really exciting to talk about like education. And it, for me, um, I got started kind of my journey is at the University of Central Florida studying computer science with a focus around computer security and artificial intelligence. That kind of aligns where my next job pursuit was actually an in artificial intelligence. And while that was super awesome, I really found it like strange to not have a lot of people kind of involved in that conversation. And so that kind of directed my way into being an educator and kind of making people learn more about how do we build products? So that way we could, you know, enhance people and empower people 
with the opportunity with building great technology like AI. That's kind of my background. Awesome. And Hannah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Hannah Parton. I work at Yale University. I'm the communications manager for Yale Summer Session, and I'm really excited to be here with you all today. Um, I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia, went to the University of Georgia, go dogs, and then got my master's degree in student affairs from Clemson University. And I've been here at Yale for two years, loved every minute of it, and I'm really excited about this program. Um, and I hope to maybe see some of you guys this summer. Awesome, awesome. So uh, Hannah, feel free to continue on and uh, you can talk about what Yale Summer Session is all about. Sure, I'd love to. Um, so Yale Summer Session, um, we offer courses on campus, online, and abroad. Um, so we offer over 200 courses in a variety of disciplines. Um, all of our courses carry Yale College credit, um, which is very helpful for, for Yale students, obviously, but also for visiting students. Um, visiting students can acquire Yale College credit, so you get a Yale College, you get a transcript from Yale, which is great. Um, and you can talk to your home institution about transferring that credit back. Um, we welcome students, um, so students that are going into their um, first year of college, so they've just left high school. Um, Yale College students, as I said, visiting college students, and professionals from all over the world. So summer at Yale is a really great time to be here because you have all of the resources that you get in the fall or the spring, but a little bit more breathing room and a little more space for, for creativity and to really focus on what you want to focus on. And also beautiful weather, right? Of course. <laughs> Yeah. Campus is getting more and more beautiful by the day. Um, so yeah, Yale in the summertime is the best season. Amazing, amazing. And um, in terms of uh, what Flatiron School is, for those of you who may not know or first learning about our uh, company and our brand, um, you know, Flatiron School is a uh, global school that teaches 21st century skills to you know what we call change makers over here. And um, you know, those skills really revolve around. Uh, software engineering and data science and UI UX and for those who maybe don't know what that means it's user experience and user interface and um, ultimately just you know at the center of all that is uh, you know the coding skills that we equip uh, and programming skills that we equip students with um, the company launched uh, in 2012 in New York City um, we've just had some incredible figures that are showcased on the slide here and have experienced some extreme uh, and, and really high growth um, over the last few years um, especially after um, an acquisition that took place back in uh, October of 2017 through a, a, a very popular company called WeWork that many of you have probably heard of, uh, which has really allowed us to begin to increase our footprint um, in other cities and countries around the world and, you know, um, and allows us to, you know, partner with awesome entities like uh, Yale and Summer Session to um, offer our program in, in Connecticut this summer. Um, so in terms of what you know, you're gonna actually learn and why this is important um, uh, here at uh, our web development bootcamp that we're doing with uh, Yale Summer Session, um, it's really uh, the first bullet uh, is super important. You're gonna be able to start being able to think uh, and build like a software engineer. And uh, there's some really impactful uh, 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 substance behind that statement. Um, you know, a lot of it's validated by like, for instance, the Department of Labor where um, you know, they have statistics that talk about how, you know, coding skills and coding careers are so much so on the horizon. They're actually the fastest pacing uh, uh, jobs or careers that one can actually take on and will continue to be able to take on over the course of the next 10 years. And on top of that, these uh, skills that you would gain by being able to think and build like a software engineer, you know, these kinds of careers are one, the highest paying and, uh, you know, they span across all different types of industries, whether it's art, science, math engineering, you know, even things like sports, like these skills nowadays are uh, becoming so much more relevant across so many different fields. And um, you're also going to be able to take away different relevant modern programming languages, uh, which we'll touch on in a little bit, um, that you're going to be able to learn during um, this course. Um, and, you know, on top of that, you're going to be able to build like your own technology uh, and your own technical portfolio online of the different projects that you create and be able to create your own um, you know, integrated web, web development environment that you could power um, on in your home, uh, uh, you know, after you're finished with the course. So just some really powerful different takeaways um, and, and why this is so important. Um, 
And, you know, on top of that, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, why you would want to then ultimately join this course, um, there's a couple of really key reasons. Um, you know, our curriculum uh, is incredibly rigorous. It's in uh, incredibly competitive. Um, and on top of that, uh, you know, it's this opportunity where if you're a tech newbie, if you don't have any background in computer science, like all of a sudden you're able to join a program like this without any of that background and be able to, uh, uh, at the end of it, become, you know, a software engineer, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, the course itself also offers uh, two Yale College credits, which is uh, incredibly powerful. And I mean, Hannah, if you quickly would just want to like highlight uh, what is so powerful and impactful about that, um, I think the audience would love to hear. Yeah, so it's not exactly easy to get a course approved at Yale. Um, it takes a lot, a lot of work. Um, so the process that this course went through was just like any any other Yale course that any Yale faculty member goes through. Um, it goes through a lot of different committees, has to be voted on by all of the faculty. So it's a really rigorous process. So the fact that it was awarded not one, but two Yale credits is really impressive. And if you're a Yale student, it also offers a QR requirement, which stands for quantitative reasoning. That's like gold if you're a Yale student. So you're always looking for that. Um, so the fact that this course offers two Yale credits and QR, you're going to get a Yale transcript. Um, if you're a Yale student, it goes straight onto your, you know, list of courses that you're going to take that help you get to graduation. Um, if you're a visiting college student, chances are your home institution will let you transfer that credit back. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's not an easy process to get Yale credit. And the fact that this one got two Yale college credits and QR is, is just shows the depth of the program. And again, goes back um, to what Max was saying about, it's not just about teaching you, you know, the skills, but actually how to think like a software engineer, which is what we pride ourselves on here at Yale is teaching you how to think in new, cool and creative ways. And that's exactly what this class is gonna do. Amazing, amazing. And anything in particular that, you know, uh, 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 Flatiron School in particular as a brand or as a company, uh, uh, you know, highlighted out for you, you and your team that, you know, decided that you wanted to uh, partner up uh, with our company on this summer session. Was there anything about our company as a whole or our brand as a whole that really stuck out? Yeah, lots of things. I mean, Flatiron is a one of the best coding boot camps in the world. Um, so they were definitely at the top of our list. Going back to, you know, it's not just about teaching you the coding skills and then sending you off. It's teaching you a new way of thinking, um, which probably was our biggest factor in determining which coding boot camp to partner with because this wasn't an easy decision. Um, we wanted to make sure that our students were going to get the best of the best. And with Flatiron, they they definitely were. And um, Prince is, you know, just an, an amazing faculty, you know, he's going to be an amazing faculty member for this summer. Um, so that's not an easy process either to be to go through to become a, a Yale faculty member for a course. Um, yeah. So there were just kind of everything with Flatiron just really lined up the the curriculum, specifically the the coding languages that were taught, those are what students want to learn, the JavaScript, Ruby. They were going off and doing this, you know, on their own in the summers, and we realized Yale needs our own thing. We need right. our own thing, so we partnered with Flatiron specifically because they really ticked every box. Awesome, awesome. And, you know, for those that are listening, um, you know, there's also, like, an incredible experience that you're going to go through by while being in this boot camp. Um, you're you're going to build incredibly... Uh, 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 strong friendships with those that are in the class with you. Uh, you're going to be able to create uh, incredible cool projects that uh, uh, we're going to show you a, a quick little snapshot of what that kind of looks like. But all in all, just know that uh, there's a, a real experiential component to this, um, you know, um, uh, with one being in the New Haven and, uh, area and being on Yale's campus all the way through, you know, these different languages that you'll be learning and the, the type of person that you'll be by the end of it. Uh, uh, which is incredibly powerful. Um, some other things that we wanted to go into uh, was the fact that, you know, the name of this course, just so you know, it's CPSC S115. So this is the intro to full stack web, web development course that uh, uh, Yale is offering. As uh, Hannah mentioned, you're getting two Yale college credits for it. It's a 10 week long full time commitment that you have to be willing to make. Um, and we'll go over the different dates of when that 10 week commitment is this summer uh, in a few slides later. Um, Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, SQL, these are the different programming languages that you're gonna be able to learn 
um, while in the course. And, uh, you know, there's some, you know, incredibly powerful things that come with those different languages. The fact that you'll be able to build these cool projects on programs like GitHub and uh, uh, using our Learn uh, platform, which is a proprietary learning platform. I'm curious if, uh, Prince, on your end, if you want to just highlight some really cool things about either like Learn or about these popular programming languages that the audience should know a little bit more about, or for instance, like GitHub, what they should know a little bit more about these programs and languages. Absolutely. So for context, the first programming languages that I learned were C and Java. And most of these uh, programming languages that we use are around kind of the interfaces that we deal with computers. But as we move forward into technology, we're working towards web technologies and being able to access that not only on our phones, but also on laptops and all these things. And Ruby on Rails and JavaScript are just some of the tools that allow us to be able to make technologies that are not only accessible on our own devices, but across the world. And I think that's kind of what excites me. It's not just the fact that you're learning about JavaScript or you're learning about Ruby on Rails. It's that you're learning how to build applications so that way, even if you decide later on that you want to learn new languages, you've been equipped with the ability to learn things quickly and how to get the most out of it. I think also to showcase GitHub, like many people as you go into your career might have to sh showcase your work over time. And this just goes, one of the ways that we integrate how you're learning is to build that GitHub profile. So you're making a staple and saying, this is what I'm learning. This is my commitment to growing as a developer and you can keep track of that over time. And that way you can showcase the projects that you're working on as well as the things that you're learning. So cool, so cool. Um, thank you for adding that. Um, so we'll keep moving forward. And I know actually Prince, you really uh, were excited about these upcoming slides where we can showcase to the audience um, just incredible uh, uh, web applications that um, students at Flatiron School in the past have been able to build. So uh, just so we can give the audience a sense of, you know, certain things that they'll be able to do tangibly by the time the program's over, um, I'll let you run through a couple of uh, projects that we highlighted here. So go ahead. Yeah. So the first one that we have here is called Project Spotify. And they created this web application and that allows you to be able to estimate the amount of money that different artists make through Spotify. So what they did is they built this web application using JavaScript and Ruby on Rails, and they made an integration with Spotify to actually calculate how much money is this particular artist making by taking the determination of like how many songs they have, how many plays they get, and the algorithm that Spotify has, they're actually able to do that. And as I mentioned before, when did they create it? They created it in that last two weeks of their project time. And I think that's kind of what speaks to the volume of like, work that Spotify students present is the fact that people build things because they're great. Like if you have some sort of idea that you want to chase or some problem you want to solve, we equip you with the ability to do that. We allow you to kind of take this vision of, hmm, I have this idea. Can I make it happen? And so, allow you to do that. Amazing. And uh, we, we have a second one here that uh, I was super impressed by uh, when you showed it to me. So tell us about Project Keyboard Karaoke. Yes. So. My some of my students really like making games or recreating games. And so this is a kind of a drill down version of a video game known as Guitar Hero, which is kind of recreating playing songs like an artist would. Here in this project, what they're doing is allowing the user to type in lyrics to the song and actually gauging the accuracy of that song or like how they're typing. And you can see kind of in this little gif below is that if you make any mistakes, it also detracts from your store or if you make like miss the lyric, it counts against you as a strike. And the fact that people can create that in two weeks time just kind of shows you that you have the ability to build anything that you put your mind to. And right. the fact that this is on the internet, like you can actually access these sorts of things. And I think that to me is what excites me about teaching people how to build the skill. So cool. And, and like on that front prints, like, um, can you highlight like maybe some of the challenges that you know, one of these students might have faced as they were trying to build these apps um, and then like how you were able to help them uh, uh, or on their own, how they were to maneuver through certain roadblocks to, to get by that challenge to ultimately come up with this awesome finished product and this incredible game that they created. I think one of the things that really intrigued me about this problem is the idea of like having to be knowing what lyrics are being demonstrated at what time having to figure out a plan, like how do you showcase this lyric and how do you also make sure that in time they're able to execute on it? What right. we did is we kind of strategized what would the 
the MVP or the minimal viable product of this look like? Well, essentially the first kind of step that we did is we said, maybe let's break it down into chunks. So there's certain words that they need to write at a certain time. And we kind of broke that down together and then said, how would we be able to estimate that? And breaking down this big problem into smaller things. So cool. And like, can you give us a glimpse of like what, you know, type of fulfillment uh, these students had after they were done creating these projects? Like, what does that look like in their eyes after they're done with the completion of it? What, what's the feeling that they have? The fact that not only did they do one song, they did five different songs to be actually able to like play this game. I think that sent them some fulfillment that they, this idea that they thought was just like, you know, a fun, cool thing to build. They actually right. made it. They made something out of nothing. And I think that the kind of like, the excitement that everyone gets of like, it finally works. Oh, I've been st struggling through this problem. And they're just excited to finally see it happening is the excitement that not only fills them, but fills me. Yeah, that's right. Awesome, awesome. So uh, what we'll do is thank you so much for, for highlighting that. And I hope uh, the audience, if you have questions about the projects, uh, audience members, you're welcome to submit them. Um, but we will definitely, uh, we'll keep moving forward here. Um, so Hannah, on your end, um, here are some of the program details. I think it'd be great if you could just like provide some different highlights um, about the course as a whole that the, the audience members should know about um, uh, in particular. Yeah, um, so it's a 10 week course um, and it's it's full time. It's nine to six. Obviously, you get a lunch um, and the way I think we'll go over it in a little bit. But the way um, we've kind of structured the day, um, you're not just sitting in a lecture the entire day like you might think for a, an all day class. Um, it's very interactive. You're going to work with your, your classmates. You're going to work with prints. Um, you're going to do fun projects. You might even do some seated yoga and some fun other little things like that. Um, so it's, it's a rigorous program, but it's the way they structure the day um, is very intentional. Um, again, that two college credits, you just can't beat that. Um, you're going to get it in a very small cohort, so you're going to get that personalized attention. Um, tuition for the entire program is 8200 and we do have um, financial assistance available for Yale students. Um, but Yale is, you know, obviously one of the um, most beautiful universities in the United States, if not the world. Um, and the summer is the perfect time to come. Um, if you enroll in this program and you're accepted in this program, you also have the opportunity to live in one of our residential colleges. So you really get the full Yale experience. You can live off campus too, but why not? If you're going to study at Yale, do Yale. Um, live on campus, eat in the dining halls, get the full Yale experience. Um, so this program is kind of, in terms of how much Yale you want to get out of it, I say go for it. Get all of Yale, get all of Flatiron in 10 amazing weeks. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a summary. I hope that excites you because it really excites me. Yeah, and the one thing that I just want to highlight as well for the audience that's listening, um, you know, this $8,200 price point, just to put it uh, in context, like, you know, we have our New York City immersive course. It's a little bit longer in, in, in time frame, but, you know, it's uh, a $17,000 course. So, you know, think about it. Now you have the opportunity at $8,200 at Yale's campus where you're going to get two Yale college credits, um, you know, to take this course and, and still have that incredible uh, experience and be a software engineer by the time it's all over. So just realize there's that massive, uh, 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 you know, discount here to, to take the course um, at Yale that you should be mindful of. Um, and uh, Hannah, do you want to just talk about like the different types of people that can apply and, and you know, how it's, you know, not just only Yale students that are eligible to, to participate in this? Sure. So along with Yale students, um, we um, are inviting visiting college students um, and graduate students to apply, um, high school graduates. So you can't be currently in high school. You have to have, you know, just graduated. And then if you want to do your first summer before you go off to college, totally fine. Um, as well as working professionals. This program, again, um, going to teach you to think and build like a software engineer. And all of these populations can so benefit from that. Um, so that's why it's open to all of these different groups. Awesome. That's so helpful and uh, good for people to know. Um, and uh, Prince, when it comes to the, the syllabus uh, and we're getting into the schedule next, can you just give us a quick like kind of overview of, of what the, the audience is seeing here in terms of the, the breakdown of the syllabus? And there'll be a link about the, uh, the detailed syllabus on our last slide, but if you, if you could. 
Yeah. So the way that we break down the structure is having this as an opportunity to segment out what you're learning throughout your journey. So the first part of the journey is the idea of pre-work in module A. Pre-work is just a fundamental knowledge that we want you to have. If you've been exposed to programming, sometimes it's introducing you to those concepts again, but in the context of Ruby. So that's like what module A would be involved with. And then in module B, what we'll do is we'll take the core concepts that we know and love about Ruby and then apply it to the web. What we'll be able to do is be able to say, hey, now that we have like the understanding of how the web uh, Ruby works, we can apply how do we make a website? What are the kind of core concepts that we need to understand to build in that website? So where it says like web frameworks, web development, with Rails, that's exactly what will happen. And then module C, what we'll go into is now how do we make interactive websites using JavaScript? A lot of the websites that we use nowadays is powered by JavaScript. And that's kind of why we think it's one of the core fundamentals to get out of our program is being able to say, how do you make real-time applications how do you grow as a developer and learn that second language? So that way you can be exposed, not only by one language, but two. And the last two weeks of our program, what it's focused on is building that student project. So that way you have like a capstone project that you're able to say, this is what I built in two weeks time. This is what I can do to demonstrate my journey as a software engineer. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, that's definitely helpful. Um, and how about like, you know, the schedule that you're going to be putting your students through. Give us uh, a glimpse as to that. I'm glad to see that you guys are, uh, that they're, they're gonna be able to eat lunch and, and dinner, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that we kind of do is we start our day with these ideas and discussion questions. An opportunity to kind of get us started with thinking about, okay, what problems are we solving and having it a collaborative effort. This helps us be able to learn new things because we're opening these neural pathways and saying, hey, I'm about to learn this thing. Whether or not I know it, I'm opening that stronger connection. Throughout the day, we'll do maybe one or two lectures, which are mostly just an hour to an hour and a half so that we can talk about a concept and then we'll do a break for lunch and we'll do something we call pair programming. This is an industrial, like an industry standard where people work together in this project where like, let's say we have a lab on our assignment where we work together and we take turns solving the problem. One person writing the code and the other person actually explaining the process that we go through by practicing both skills and switching between both of those kind of techniques allows us to be able to say, how do I write code, but also how do I talk about code? How do we have this universal language? And then towards sometimes in the beginning of our weeks, we'll do these things called icebreakers, which is, you know, learning, learning new things about each and one another. I think that's kind of important because not only are you going to be working, you know, from nine to six, but you're going to be in this new community of people. And I think that's like really what I love about Flatiron School is that we focus on not only learning code, not only learning how to learn, but also the community that we're trying to cultivate. Yeah, and that's where those strong friendships and bonds start to really uh, uh, take place, I imagine, you know, during the course of day after day, um, being able to do that and really understand who you're, you're working with here and learning these new languages with. Um, awesome, amazing stuff. Um, so we're at the tail end of our, uh, uh, webinar here. So if you're still excited about um, this Yale Flatiron School partnership for this web development boot camp, um, let's just go over some of the next steps. Um, and again, as a reminder, if you have questions about what you've seen so far, please feel free to submit them in the questions box. We're going to get to that in about another minute. Um, so the next steps here are, are the following. Um, you'll notice there's some pretty uh, important key dates here. So we have here our application period. Um, you might have noticed in the emails you've got from us uh, that uh, the application period ends on April 29th uh, at 5 p.m. That's this coming Monday. Uh, so definitely be mindful of that. And in the bottom left-hand corner, that's actually the web URL to go to to actually go and apply uh, formally online for uh, the course. Um, upon doing that, um, we then send uh, the students who apply a, a technical submission. It's like a handful of uh, some coding exercises. We'll take you a couple of hours to complete but just that you can actually like see a little bit more as to what the course is offering and what you know um, uh, programming computer science uh, is and uh, you know the deadline uh, uh, for those submissions is May 6th so just a few days later um, at 9 a.m. Um, at that point and Hannah you can feel free to uh, chime in here as well uh, uh, Yale you know will release decisions and, and pre-work to uh, those students that are going to be moving forward and then uh, a few days later you have the actual uh, enrollment deadline where you have to make a decision on if you're going to 
um, actually uh, be moving forward with um, you know participating in this incredible opportunity and this incredible program. Um, is there anything you want to uh, add there, Hannah, with regards to either the date or the pre-work or whatever it might be? No, I, I think I think you did a great job. Um, it is a quick turnaround, and obviously with that application um, due on Monday, um, I encourage you to. It's it's pretty it's pretty simple. The first application, um, it won't take too much of your time, um, but make sure you you have enough time to complete that technical submission before May six. I wouldn't um, do that. You know, start two hours before the deadline. Um, go ahead and give yourself some time. So you can really let it sink in too, um, and see if this is a right fit for you. You know, like, are you having a lot of fun? Is it, is it, you know, um, is it interesting to you? Take some time to really um, reflect while you're doing that. Um, but yeah, um, if you have any specific questions about the timeline, feel free to to ask in the comments. Absolutely, great. Um, and when it comes to like the types of applicants that we look for and, and things that we, we, we tend to find really uh, are, are sort of key characteristics um, of Flatiron student graduates and those initial applicants, it's, it's things like passion and you know, some of the shared values that we have as a company at Flatiron School that we try to see if uh, applicants also have. Um, also this concept of aptitude where you're really trying to, to level up your skills and uh, uh, take, you know, your, uh, maybe it's your career or your knowledge base, whatever it might be, depending on who's applying to that next level. Um, I'm curious uh, on your end, Prince, like you know, you've, you've taught so many different students and you're gonna have the chance to teach so many students at Yale this summer. Like what are some you know, other key characteristics you found in the students that tend to just do incredibly well uh, in our program? Yes, I think all these uh, values right here, or these kind of touch points are pretty accurate. But I think one of the other kind of things that I look at are their ability to communicate. Like being a developer is not just about writing code. It's also about how do we communicate to one another? How do we communicate across teams? How do we communicate with our own teams? Cool. The other parts are like our ability to collaborate. How do we work with other people? What is working together? How do we strive for success together? Because it's not about competition there you know like all of us are in it together and right. as a team we work together and move forward and then i would say that the other things that i look at are the excitement to learn like that should be exciting for you this is not going to just teach you about being a great developer it's also going to give you practical knowledge and skills that allow you to apply to any course that you're working forward learning how to learn that's the ultimately what i think most people who are successful in this bootcamp get the most out of is this is helping me learn new things quickly. Amazing, uh, so helpful. Um, and so, if you're a listener, you know, and you hear certain things that either myself or Prince said, and you feel like that embodies you, um, you know, again, we strongly suggest that uh, uh, you, you take this opportunity to participate in our bootcamp, which is a a great transition into our last slide here. Um, you know, ultimately now we're going to take the, the opportunity to answer any questions. Um, but before we do, just, you know, to highlight some of the key next steps here. So if you uh, have found today's webinar interesting, uh, maybe some of the characteristics that uh, uh, Prince just mentioned, uh, you know, fit or embody yourself, you know, we really strongly encourage you to apply online using the link uh, found here on the website, the summer.yale.edu slash flatiron link. Um, just go right to that web address and you'll see the application right there, even more information about the program. Um, if you have questions, um, please feel free to email us. Um, it's just as simple as flatiron at yale.edu. And you know, if after today you wanna just get a better sense of the syllabus, um, we have a link uh, here, a shortened link uh, that you can find the detailed syllabus um, online so that you can actually review that for yourself and see if you think this uh, is the right uh, uh, course for you. And, you know, just to kind of uh, uh, put a bow on it and wrap up, you know, as mentioned before, um, all the different jobs in technology and across all different sorts of industries um, are really moving towards, you know, the coding landscape. Um, this is a, an opportunity for you to, uh, you know, if, if you, let's say you have an idea in your head for something you want them to build, or you know, maybe one day you want to be a, an entrepreneur and build a business, this, is, this course is going to give you the technical skills to be able to do that. Um, and it's also just going to be a, uh, you know, a life-changing experience, um, you know, being in Yale, uh, being able to, 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 to learn how to become a software engineer uh, with, you know, the guidance of Prince, who's an incredible instructor and has done this countless times now for, for hundreds of students, I imagine. Um, you know, it's just uh, an incredible opportunity for you to uh, uh, now equip yourself with these skills and, um, you know, do it 
in a, a at you know the the world's be most beautiful campus, um, uh, uh, college campus that is around um, over at Yale. So thank you all so much for uh, listening. I know we're a couple minutes over, but we are happy to to answer some questions, and I'm glad to see that there's um, a bunch. So um, let's start just from the top and. Uh, uh, Prince or Hannah, if you feel like you'd be uh, great to answer it, just let me know and we'll uh, uh, we'll start there. So um, I see here a uh, question from Daniela. So Daniela, uh, Danielle, uh, you write, are high school students eligible? Um, so uh, if you are still in high school, unfortunately not. Um, if you are a recent high school graduate, um, you absolutely could uh, uh, participate. Um, or if you're on the verge of graduating. Hannah, anything you want to add there? Right, that's that's right. So if if you're graduating, you know, in 2019, um, in May 2019, before the summer starts from high school, then you are eligible to apply. Um, if you are a rising sophomore or junior or senior, um, unfortunately, you're not eligible for this program. Got it, cool. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Daniel, if you have another uh, follow-up to that, just submit it and we'll get to it in a second. Um, Precious, you write, is it possible for one to pay the $8,500, although it's $8,200, Precious, so don't uh, overpay here, uh, tuition in some sort of installment? Um, so uh, on that front, Hannah, anything you want to address on that? I know there was a, a bit about how you offer financial aid to existing students. Um, do you want to talk about just the payment process? Right. Um, so we don't offer any installment payments, um, and the tuition would be due um, on on May 10th. Um, and you can get, um, I think, up to on our on our website on that um, uh, summer.yale.edu/flatiron. Scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's also information about the refund policy um, if you're interested in that. Um, but um, as Max mentioned, um, if you are a Yale student. We do offer financial assistance to any student who's currently on financial aid, which covers 50% of tuition. Um, so that knocks down the price um, to 4,100 if you're a Yale student. Cool, okay, awesome. Um, Daniel, you write, my students won't graduate in time before the program begins. Can students attend if they miss a few of the first few days? Um, I don't believe so, Daniel. Um, Hannah and Prince, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like it's pretty crucial, right, Prince, that you know you need to be eligible or, or excuse me, be able to be starting from day one because every day uh, is a new learning experience, correct? Yes, absolutely. We want to make sure that even on day one, you're learning new things and you're practicing the knowledge that you have. Got it. And um, so yeah, unfortunately, like you know, Daniel, we're gonna need. Uh, students that want to participate to be able to participate from day one. If you have follow-up questions about that though, or you want to speak to, you know, maybe Hannah uh, offline about, you know, your specific circumstance with some students that you have in mind maybe for the course, I think uh, Hannah would be open ears to at least hearing um, out, you know, what uh, uh, the situation is. Um, uh, Andre, she write, what are the differences between this boot camp and the one offered in Flatiron School in New York? Do you also offer career advice and job search help? So great question, Andres. Um, a couple of key things to highlight in terms of differences. Uh, one that I definitely want to stress uh, was that price difference, right? That's really important. A $17,000 course versus a $8,200 course. So now you have this ability to take advantage of a, a, a much uh, lesser price point. Um, on top of that, there's, um, and Prince, you can highlight this if you'd like as well. There's a particular component in our curriculum in New York City called Module D. Um, it's something that uh, a portion of the curriculum that uh, highlights a particular JavaScript framework called React. Um, and that particular uh, portion we have removed from uh, uh, the course um, at Yale. Um, that said though, and um, Prince, feel free to highlight, um, you also get the ability to take advantage of other frameworks like Rails. So Prince, do you wanna highlight anything about that? Maybe, although you don't get the uh, uh, tag on uh, React, you do get other framework experience? Right, and being able to practice either Ruby on Rails and JavaScript allows you to be, get the capacity to learn React. To kind of also talk about one of the, probably the most important differences between what Flat and School offers and what Yale offers is that you get the Yale credit out of it. I think that's like a pretty key difference for me to pay less and still get Yale credit and still learn the same rigorous coursework. I think that kind of, to me, speaks volumes that's that's kind of how I see it. I think that you'd still be able to practice the same things if you were in our New York campus 
or any of our campuses that are not with the Yale partnership, the only missing element would be the React component. Yeah, understood. And just to answer your other question, Andres, so um, on our end, uh, the course, um, given it's 10 weeks long, um, you know, there isn't the, the career services um, uh, support that we would uh, offer typically someone graduating from our New York campus. So that is not included. Um, that said, though, you know, when you were to finish your 10 weeks, um, you know, there are ample opportunities um, given uh, Flatiron School, the kinds of events that we host, the kinds of inner workings that we have with different uh, employers. Um, where you know there's different events that we host and with our partnership with WeWork there's various networking events um, as a graduate of our program there's no doubt that we would be able to uh, provide you the, the 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 notice of when those kinds of events are taking place um, given that you would have graduated from our program just maybe not the same program in New York City um, to allow you to be able to further your job search process but just be clear that the same amount of career services does not exist with the, the Yale course. So definitely be mindful of that. Um, Alex, you write, uh, next question, Alex, uh, at the end of the program, do we get a valid certificate from Yale Flatiron School? Um, uh, Hannah, do you wanna answer uh, that part? Sure, um, you get a Yale transcript. Um, you get a Yale transcript that says um, that you were involved you know, in CPS CS 115, Intro to Full Stack Web Development. Um, so, I think that's better than a certificate. Um, yeah, so um, you can put it on your resume, um, you know, that you were in the Yale Flatiron School. Um, not just that, but the inaugural class of it, which sounds is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you are officially, you know, by enrolling in this course, you're enrolling in Yale University for a summer. Um, so you are in our, regist you know, registrar system. Um, so you will contact the Yale registrar and get that transcript whenever you need it. Absolutely, and Alex, so you know, I, uh, on our end, uh, we have a Flatiron School certificate that uh, uh, we should be able to equip you with as well after you're finished. So you would have both of those, plus two college credits from Yale. Um, Andres, you met, uh, you mentioned next, what differences are there between this program and other boot camps such as App Academy, Iron Hack, um, et cetera? So um, it's a great question. You know, there's a variety of different coding boot camps out there um, that people can take advantage of. Uh, I think the the thing to highlight about uh, Flatiron and Prince, feel free to uh, add anything extra to this. Um, and same to you, Hannah, would be uh, the fact that uh, uh, Flatiron School, um, the the kind of experience that we're offering amongst yourself and your classmates, and uh, this ability to, as Prince put it before, like you're, you're learning to learn new languages. Um, we're putting you in this position where. Um, you are just taking that aptitude that we talked about before to a, a, a totally new level um, that you wouldn't have experienced before. Um, and also the rigor of our curriculum. So um, it's really important to highlight that, you know, there's not, if any, other boot camps that can kind of have this uh, uh, partnership with Yale. And as Hannah mentioned, they went through a, a, a super extreme uh, 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 vetting process. Um, I believe, Hannah, the, the dean of your computer science program had to sign off on this and had a chance to review other uh, potential uh, coding boot camps to uh, integrate into the summer session. So it highlights how uh, uh, rigorous our curriculum is, um, all while at the same time, you know, falling in love with programming, with computer science, to be able to just become this incredible software engineer. So that's how I would frame it. Um, Prince or Hannah, do you have anything else you want to add there? No, I think you covered it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Christopher, you write, no questions here. Great job, all. Thank you so much, Christopher. Um, Sean, you write, I have a trip planned for July 24th, returning on July 29th. That would be four missed days in the last two weeks during the course. Is that a deal breaker or would I still be able to take this course? Um, Prince, do you, if that's the last two weeks of the pro, uh, of the course where maybe the project's taking place and we don't know what Sean's travels look like, you know, maybe he's able to work on the project while away, but I'd love for you to maybe take that question, um, if you can. I think that it, I mean, everyone was able to, as long as you're able to return back to the day of, we can potentially make that work. However, one of the biggest things that I want to highlight is that those it's unlikely is like one of those unpredictable days, right? Like we were 
are able to make sure that you're completing your project. So that's like one of the kind of downsides to that part. And I wouldn't want to set you up for failure. I want to set you up for success. So okay. if that were something that you were interested in knowing that now in advance, I would recommend that making sure you make your plans appropriate and figuring out how would you build your project given that time constraint. It's already a condensed course and that might not be in your best interest given the fact that you would have a grade. Right. And I think, you know, on top of that, like, uh, Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, but like in a circumstance like this, at least like maybe we would be willing to understand ahead of time what the specifics are to Sean's case, and we can kind of make a determination if uh, of it work if it works for Sean as well as for Flatiron School and Yale. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's a case by case basis. Um, so if this, you know, you're seriously considering this program and this is the one thing that's keeping you, um, send us an email at that Flatiron at Yale.edu, um, and we'll we'll work with you. Great. Um, Mia, you wrote, is there an option for a payment plan? So we covered this a bit before. Um, if you're a Yale student, there is uh, uh, financial assistance um, that uh, is provided to a Yale student um, if they qualify. Um, you know, there are some uh, uh, different pieces of information about payments uh, on the website that's featured here on this slide, um, but there is no like formal payment plan per se uh, that you can get you know, entered into to, to pay off the course. That $8,200 uh, uh, fee is, you know, kind of set and would need to be uh, uh, paid for um, when you enroll, which would be by the 10th of May. Um, anything else there, Hannah? Or that, that's the, the the synopsis of that, right? We covered it before? Yeah. Yeah. Um, estimated size of the class, Dominic asks. So on our front, the estimated size, Dominic, that we're envisioning um, is in that 20 to 25 student range. Um, that's really the, 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 the cap on the total size of the class. Um, Dominic asks, is there a meal included in the cost um, or a meal plan included in the cost? Unfortunately not, Dominic. Um, you're strictly just paying for the learning experience, the course, being on Yale's campus for the course um, and all the takeaways that you'll get from it. Unfortunately, there's no other like supplemental um, uh, uh, perks like a, a meal plan that we include in it, so I, I apologize. Um, Precious asks, is it possible for non-Yale students to pay the $8,200 tuition in some sort of installment. Um, again, Precious, uh, the answer to that is at this time, uh, uh, there isn't that ability, uh, maybe in the future, um, but at this time, uh, uh, that doesn't exist. Um, only real form of, uh, of assistance would come towards uh, a Yale student. So, you know, we're able to include non-Yale students in the program, but on the financial front, um, unfortunately, we, we can't uh, provide any uh, uh, assistance there. Um, Rusen writes, thank you for offering this program. I am a designer and do not have any coding experience. I hope to do some user experience and interactive art design in the future, which I assume requires coding skills. Do you think this program would be a good fit for me? Um, absolutely. Um, I'm sure Prince would uh, 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 validate this as well. Absolutely, Rusen. Um, you know, in my short time being here at Flatiron School, I've had a chance to interact with some of our recent graduates who were graphic artists, kind of like yourself and what you're describing. Um, and I can tell you that those designers, those graphic artists, um, you know, they only had such positive things to say after going through um, our course and our program. And so there is no doubt that um, this program is for you and would be an incredible fit for you to level up your design skills with some of these programming skills and some of those front end programming skills like HTML, CSS, JavaScript that are gonna uh, uh, take your resume, take your uh, knowledge base to a whole new level. Um, so we would totally encourage it and please uh, 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 apply uh, via the application link here on the, the page. Um, Precious writes, okay, thank you. Dominic, you write, so it's cheaper with Yale credit and housing. So it's cheaper with Yale credit and housing. Um, Hannah, do you understand? Do you do what, you know what Dom is asking there exactly? I don't know if he means like the the regular Flatiron programs out of New York because you said they were it's like seventeen thousand. So yeah. and our our course being eighty four hundred and then yeah. housing for eight for ten weeks on Yale's campus um, is seventy one hundred. Yeah, so, so it's a separate. Yeah. We didn't talk about it, but it's a separate cost. It's separate, but still, is that still cheaper than seventeen thousand? Maybe. That's right. Yes. And uh, on top of that, what to include is, yes, you're getting this Yale credit. Uh, you know, Dominic, again, there's one portion of our curriculum that Prince mentioned uh, on uh, React, a particular framework that relates to JavaScript that's 
he wouldn't be getting here. But one thing also just to throw out there, Dominic, is that uh, Flatiron School and Yale are offering you the ability after the 10 weeks are complete to take that module on uh, uh, React. So if you wanted to uh, uh, take that extra portion after the 10 weeks are complete, um, it would be an extra $2,000, um, but you could then get the whole you know, experience in there uh, from a learning perspective, um, all the modules that someone in like the New York City campus or Chicago campus might gain. Um, Alex Wright. Uh, quick, Max, before, um, I wanted to say that 7,100 um, for 10 weeks of on-campus housing, that also includes all meals. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Cool. So I just wanted to, to clarify that. Cool. So 8,200 for the course. And then if you wanted to be in Yale on their campus, in their housing for $7,100, you're going to also get meals included plus shelter and a roof over your head? Yeah. In one of Yale's historic residential colleges. So not a Amazing. bad deal. How cool. Okay. Awesome. Uh, last couple of questions I'm seeing here. I'm so glad people are engaged. Um, is tuition payment to Yale or to Flatiron schools? So Hannah, you want to uh, tackle that? Tuition is paid to Yale. Um, yep. Great. Um, uh, Christopher, okay, no question there. Sean writes, what would the additional cost be to stay on campus? So um, as we just mentioned, Sean, that would be $7,100 um, where you get the ability to stay in one of uh, uh, as Hannah put it, one of the most historic uh, uh, buildings and have a roof over your head, meals provided to you, um, and live on Yale's campus for 10 weeks this summer, all while learning to become a software engineer. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Dominic writes, uh, compared to the other plan, uh, so Dominic, this might have been the other, okay, I think we answered the question because you write, okay, thanks, and you give us a little winky emoji. So I, I want to think we got your question. Uh, cool. And Na uh, Natalia writes, hello there. Would we be able to pay with a student loan? For example, Sally May. Um, I don't want to try and answer that question because I don't know the answer. Um, but Hannah, do you know the answer? I'm not familiar off the top of my head, but um, Natalia, I'd recommend um, you email flatiron at yale.edu and yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, if you have, if, if anyone in here has any questions specifically about um, anything like related to financial, you know, concerns for the program or any of those sorts of questions, feel free to email us. We're happy to work on a case by case basis um, with you um, to figure out options and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're interested in uh, filling up the remainder of the course uh, for everyone that's here. And if you're seriously considering it, uh, we would love to include you um, in the course. We have a few spots left. And, um, you know, thank you all once again for joining. Uh, for listening in. I hope you guys got a bunch out of it. If there's any other questions that you have, please, please, please email us. We would be happy to work with you uh, as best as we can to get you involved in the course this summer. Um, if you feel like uh, you got all the information that you needed to want to apply, you have the link right there to do so. Um, and so please uh, be encouraged to do that as well. And then we'll get that technical uh, submission work. Again, it's just a couple of uh, coding exercises for you to work on. Uh, completed and then we can hopefully get you enrolled by May 10th if not sooner. So um, I think for today that's pretty much everything. Uh, thank you for the kind words Dominic. Uh, you said we did a great job. So um, awesome, awesome. Uh, we're going to close down the webinar because um, I know we went a little over here but I think it was all super productive. So thank you all so much for listening in um, and you have all the information here. There'll be a recording that I'll send out afterwards after uh, uh, it downloads um, when we end the webinar. So thank you, Prince, and thank you, Hannah, for dedicating some time. And um, I think uh, we can call it a wrap uh, if you guys agree. Yep. Thanks for stopping by. Awesome. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate it. We're going to close down the webinar now. Cool. And I'm going to click end. And and webinar. I think we're all going to get booted out, FYI. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, bye. We'll talk in a bit. <laughs> bye, y'all. Cool. Thank you so much. And webinar.